The history of the trolleybus is almost as long as the trams they were designed to replace. At a very early stage in the life of trams, it was obvious that the restrictions of the cars being placed on rails was bound to cause problems. It was bad enough when the main obstacle the trams had to negotiate was the lowly horse-drawn wagon. But as the combustion engine was more fully developed and the motor car and early trucks became more common, it was obvious that a more manageable vehicle was going to be needed. At this stage, the early petrol-driven motor buses were not much of a threat, as they were unreliable and were, for the most part, very cramped. The earliest recorded trials of a trolley bus were in April 1882 in a Berlin suburb. It was in fact no more than a modified horse-drawn carriage. By June of that year the experiment was terminated and it was nearly two decades before anyone tried again. The second experiment began in Paris in 1900 as part of that city's great exhibition. The following year brought the first fare-paying service in Germany. And it was not until 1909 that the trolleys were introduced to Great Britain. A further two decades elapsed before systems began to evolve in London. One of the early systems in London was based in West Ham, which over the following few years was extended throughout London's East End. Throughout the summer months in certain parts of England, you can see for yourselves some of the splendid vehicles in all their glory. So before we carry on with the history of the trolley bus, let's take a look at some of them. The beautiful thing about trolley bus is how clean they are and how good they are for the environment and most of all how quiet they are. In this next sequence you see the trolley bus on the right, another bus which comes on the left which has a very familiar sound of today. Interest in old trolley buses increased when it became obvious in the early 1960s that their days were numbered. More recently, this interest has been boosted by the prospect of a new generation of trolley buses serving the public by the end of the 20th century. Meanwhile, hundreds of hours of loving care have been spent on restoring those which have survived. They may be admired as static exhibits in Belfast, Cardiff, Dublin, Glasgow and London, but rides can be enjoyed on them at Carlton, Colville, Suffolk and Sandoff, Hamberside.
By the time the First World War broke out, there were seven systems in Britain which compared to the growth of the trams over the same period was quite a small amount. All of these early vehicles were of single deck construction and the first double decker was introduced in Bradford in 1920. There was a reasonable slow growth in the spread of systems in the 20s and 30s, but this was set to change by 1931. This is a Bradford 706, which was built during the Second World War. In fact, Bradford received 37 of these vehicles in 1945-1946. They arrived with a mixture of row and park royal utility bodies, and they served the city well for several years. By the mid-1950s, however, their rather basic creature comforts were beginning to seem fairly spartan, and since mechanically they were still sound, Bradford decided, in common with many other operators of utility trolleybuses, to put new bodywork on the old chassis. East Lanx of Blackburn rebodied all DKYs between 1957 and 1960, and whilst early examples had the traditional rear entrance, the majority featured the forward entrance with folding doors.
Huddersfield Corporation always favoured high-capacity six-wheel trolleybuses and kept faith with the type even after regulations were relaxed to allow larger vehicles on two axles. It therefore became the last operator to put traditional six-wheeler trolleybuses into service and the 631 represents the 10-strong class which earned their distinction in 1959. The same desire for standardization meant that they were built, like their predecessors, only 7 foot 6 wide, although wider buses had long been permitted. Because Huddersfield considered it the maximum width suitable for Longwood Gate on Route 90, no such scruples ever affected any other motor buses that run on Longwood since. 631 was in service up to the end of the Huddersfield system in July 1968, thereby seeing only eight and a half years of active service. Its life in preservation saw it run in tours in Reading and Bournemouth before being one of the first arrivals at Santoff in 1969 and has been a stalwart of the operating fleet ever since. This is the Derby 172, Sunbeam W. Wayman. Now this is what those utility trolley buses were like when they were built. Derby 172 was one of a pair supplied in the year 1944. A further 13, though with Park Royal bodies, were delivered over the next two years. Now Derby never did rebody its wartime trolley buses and 172 ran like this until it was withdrawn early in the Derby abandonment process in 1964. 172 has spent most of the last 30 years down the road at the Westgate Trolleybus Museum, but has been let out to play or to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the end of the war which dictated its style of construction. The bodywork was extensively restored over the winter by Armthorpe Motor Company. Here we have the Nottingham 506. By far the majority of vehicles which arrived in Nottingham in the post-war years looked like this. 102 of these were put into service in the years 1949 to 1952, but 506 differs from the most in being one of 25 built to 8 feet wide. During restoration work it became evident that the bodywork was built at brushes Loughborough, premises around the time of Leicester City in 1949 at the Cup Final appearance. The eight-footers were actually the last Nottingham trolley buses to be retained and 506 was Nottingham's official last trolley bus being sign written for the closure ceremony on the 1st of July 1966. This 506 has a, a varied career. Nottingham kept it for some time in the hope that it would be preserved but uh, when it happened, it was quickly vandalized despite being kept in a locked shed. It presented a sorry sight when it arrived at Sandoft in 1974 after being kept at various locations in Yorkshire, but over subsequent years, it has gradually been restored. It now appears as it did during its latter years in Nottingham. The last trolleybus lettering was not immediately reapplied, although it was a long-term intention simply to distinguish it from other preserved Nottingham six-wheelers of similar type. Now Nottingham had one of the largest British trolleybus systems outside London and re-equipped its fleet extensively in the early post-war years. Most of the new vehicles were six-wheelers, but this 493 was one of 13 row-bodied four-wheeled BUTs delivered in 1948. 493's particular claims to fame are that when new it was exhibited at the Commercial Motor Show and that it was the first British passenger vehicle to be fitted with fluorescent lighting. The Nottingham system was destroyed with indecent haste in the mid-60s and 493 ran for the last time early in 1965, having been in preservation ever since. It came to Sandoft in the spring of 1970, and observant visitors might notice that apart from its colour, this vehicle is very similar to another type of trolley bus, the Bradford 746.
get a chance to go to Sandov, one of the most distinctive trolley buses, if you haven't seen it, is the Aachen 22. It is a huge one and a half deck German vehicle which is usually on display at gatherings. Unfortunately today it was in for repair. Apparently it was during the Second World War which saw the rapid demise of many of the tram systems. Many local authorities choosing the much more flexible trolley buses or the petrol driven motor bus. During this period, with bigger capacity and more powerful motors, the trolley buses reigned supreme. Nowhere was the expansion more notable than in the capital, and with the formation of the London Passenger Transport Board in 1933, this was indeed the heyday of the trolley bus. This expansion was halted with the outbreak of the war, and many of the remaining tram systems were destroyed during the Blitz, and when the war was over, the trams were regarded as too expensive to replace, by 1952, there were nearly 2,000 trolley buses running in London alone. At one point, it was rumoured that the famous Kingsway tram tunnel would be converted to trolley bus use. But this, in the end, never happened. The post-war boom in trolley buses continued with new systems opening up all over the country. By the late 50s, the demise of the trolley buses was fast approaching. With petrol now available very cheaply, the trolley buses were no longer regarded as a cheap alternative and with much of the infrastructure coming up for renewal and the excess pollution of the buses not being an issue, the writing was on the wall. What no one realised at the time was the argument for replacing the trolley buses with motor buses was a false one. The motor bus was more expensive to buy. In most cases it held less people and only had half the road life. From 1960 onwards, the systems began to close. Trolley buses manufacture ceased in the mid-60s. But with many of the buses having around 20 years of use left, it was not until 1972 that the final systems closed down. Thankfully, during the last decade of the trolley bus story, many enthusiasts were already making plans to ensure the survival of as many of them as possible. Many fine examples have been preserved in museums around the country, but for those people who are too young to remember the trolley buses on the streets of Britain, there are still places where you can see them running at most weekends. There are a number of fine examples here at the East Anglia Transport Museum and also in the London trolleys can be seen running at most weekends where they were originally in service in the late 1930s and early 40s.
trolley buses that you've just seen are of course at the East Anglia Transport Museum. Here you can see their unique project, the creation of a museum of street transport designed to show the development of mechanical transport over the past part of a century. You have just seen just a few trolley buses, but if you go there, you will see a 1926 Strachan and Brown, which was used by Nessa Copenhagen, a 1947 Wayman, which was used by Hastings Tramways, a 1948 Hess by Beale of Switzerland, and a 1930 Ransoms, which was used by the Ipswich Corporation, a 1953 Wayman at Maidstone Corporation, and a 1956 Bond, which was used at Ashton Underline Corporation. There will be a 1953 Willowbrook, a 1958 Harkness, used by the Belfast Corporation, and a 1936 Metro Camel, used by London Transport. It is ironic to think that the principle that was once destroyed could well come back again. To think that with the pollution caused by petrol and diesel, the mass congestion of traffic in the cities and fuel costs rising all the time, there are many cities contemplating cleaner and quiet transport systems. It could well mark a new future for some type of modern trolleybus for the new millennium.
Watching this video has given you an insight to a wide variety of vehicles seen from Sandtoft and the East Anglia Transport Museum, which both are open to the public in the summer months. And of course, when they are open to the public, they regard it as essential to achieve a high standard of maintenance on all the vehicles which they run, especially those which members of the public are encouraged to travel. A regular system of inspection and maintenance is in place with their own workshops as well as two inspection pits here at East Anglia, one for tram and one for trolleybus. When operating trolleybuses, an electrical leakage test is taken at the start of each day and if an acceptable reading is not obtained, the vehicle concerned is not allowed to enter the service. Electrical current for trams and trolleybuses is provided at 600 volts DC, the power being supplied through a transformer rectifier from the electricity company's network. The transformer was purchased new in 1984 and is linked with two modern silicone rectifiers acquired in 1983. They were from the Southern Pier Railway. In case of interruption to the mains power supply, they have a standby Paxman diesel generator purchased second-hand in 1970. In the early days of the museum this was the only source of electrical traction power but is now called upon only occasionally although it is kept in first-class condition. Now the overhead wiring also has to be maintained to a high standard of efficiency and two tower wagons are currently used for this purpose. <laughs> 